iBOS just dropped this hot add-on for the original Bamboo Lab AMS. I've spent the past month with this machine, and I'm ready to share my thoughts with you now. So stick around. Today we're taking a close look at the iBOS Tetris, a brand new filament dryer add-on made exclusively for Bamboo Lab's original AMS. It launched just a few days ago, and I've been putting it through its paces. Let's jump in. First, let me get this disclaimer out of the way. Ibosa did reach out and provide me with this early unit. I'm not being paid for this review, and Ibosa will not see this video before it's released. This review is my honest take on this new product. Now, on to the review. The Tetris is part of Ibosa's new Series X lineup. Here's what makes it stand out. First, it has four independent drying chambers, each with its own heater, circulation fan, and control panel. That means you can dry four different materials at once, each with custom settings. Second, it's custom designed for the AMS right out of the box. No firmware mods, no printed adapters. Just follow the install guide, plug it in, and print. Third, it supports printing while drying. Unlike the new AMS2 Pro, the Tetris isn't controlled by the printer, so you can run a drying cycle while printing. It also has a two-stage drying option. Stage one actively removes moisture. Stage two can utilize a lower temperature to maintain low humidity for long prints. You have full control over the second stage parameters, including an unlimited time duration. Here are a few key specifications. It has a max temperature of 65 degrees Celsius, humidity control from 10 to 99%, spool support up to 205 millimeters in diameter and 68 millimeters in width. It'll draw 60 watts of power for a single dryer and 240 watts with all four dryers running. There are automatic vents on the back that open during drying and close when the cycle is complete. All openings have rubber gaskets to seal out moisture. At $179, it's aggressively priced for all of the features it brings to the AMS. Let's walk through the installation. It's quick. DJ, cue the music and roll the video. Step one, remove and replace the lid on the original AMS. Step two, add riser feet to the bottom, route the cable, and add the power module. Step three, add the control panels to the front and connect the power and control cables. Step four, add the internal chamber isolation dividers. Once all of that is complete, power on the unit and start drying your filament. Now, let's talk about how it's used day to day. Just open a chamber, drop in your spool, load the filament as usual. The filament is gonna feed out through the regular PTF tubing in the back while the drying continues in real time. Each chamber can run a different setting. PETG at 55 degrees, PLA at 45 degrees, you get the idea. The included manual shows the preset settings, but you can modify them and the unit will remember your settings. 
The interface gives data on set temperature, current temperature, relative humidity, and time remaining, so you always know what's happening inside. The thing that really sets this apart from other filament drying solution is one, it works with your existing original AMS unit to give you drying capability while you are printing. There are other filament dryers out there, but you'll have to unload your filament, load it into the dryer, dry your filament, then reload your filament into the AMS. You can't do a multicolor or a multi-filament print with a single nozzle machine using any of these dryers. The Sun Lu S4 is only $40 cheaper than the Tetris is currently priced. Another key benefit of this system is the second stage drying mode. With this feature, the two-stage heating allows for optimized drying and printing. Use the first stage to thoroughly dry your filament, then during the second stage, you can maintain a slightly lower temperature to support stable filament feeding and printing performance. Oh, here's a really fun thing to note. I was able to provide input on a rewrite of the manual since English isn't the native tongue of the folks at iBoss. Kind of cool to get to make the product manual a little easier to read. Finally, when a humidity value is set, the humidity mode turns on after the drying process is finished. The device activates drying automatically when ambient humidity exceeds the humidity value present and stops one hour after the target humidity is reached. Now, I could have spent a bunch of time weighing filament, soaking filament with water, drying filament, and all that, but honestly, who does that? We stab the bag of a new roll of filament, rip it out, and put it in the machine. Some filaments almost always need a bit of extra drying to ensure they are ready for printing. Hello, TPU! Let me just say that that's how I tested the Tetris. It's been in use on my P1S for over a month now, drying filament I use for products that I sell in my Etsy shop. I haven't run into a single issue other than a couple of rolls of filament that kept jamming and overloading the AMS, but that seemed to be a whining issue and not the fault of the dryer. All of the prints that I completed while using the Tetris came out just fine. From this torture test to the Gridfinity bases, no issues at all other than discovering that I did have a bent nozzle which was causing some clumping and stringing issues. Now, I did want to see how the Tetris performed against the AMS2 Pro, so I set up a little test. I was curious to see how the drying systems performed utilizing these Vivo Sun temperature and hygrometers with external probes. I set both units to the AMS2 Pro settings of 65 degrees Celsius for 12 hours. The Tetris was running just a single heater, whereas the AMS2 Pro was drying a roll of PETG in the same position, but it is drying the entire chamber. This graph shows time along the bottom and temperature and humidity along the side. The higher numbers are the temperatures and the lower numbers are humidity. You can see that the Tetris and AMS2 Pro performed almost identically. The Tetris seemed to drop the humidity a bit faster, but it was only drying a single chamber, whereas the AMS2 Pro is drying the entire volume. The AMS2 Pro did seem to reach a slightly higher temperature, but you can see neither of them hit the 65 degrees Celsius mark. This is fairly common when with filament dryers due to the temperature probe location, and the manufacturers are being a bit cautious about overheating filament. All right, now let's talk about the pros and cons of the Tetris. Here are the pros. It has a four chamber design with independent control. You can dry dissimilar filaments at the same time. The ability to dry a single roll of filament inside the AMS. You don't have to dedicate the printer to drying filament. Heck, you can even dry a new roll of filament while printing from another bay. That I think is huge. AMS plug and play compatibility. It doesn't affect the machine operation and there is no tie-in to the printer firmware. Quiet operation, well, mostly, more of that on the cons, but you won't hear the fans as the unit dries your filament. I'm standing right next to it now. I've got all four fans or all four heater elements running and you can probably barely hear it. Real-time humidity display. Now I will note due to the proximity of the sensor to the heating duct, you'll notice the humidity drops pretty rapidly after turning on the dryer. And it has unlimited drying time for long jobs. This is a great way to add drying capability to your existing AMS units without paying $359 for an, a new AMS2 Pro. Now, there are a few cons, but there aren't too many of them. First, it adds a bit of height to the AMS if you have vertical height constraints. 
a couple of the automatic vents did make some clicking noises when closing after drying or humidity maintenance cycle ended. It's not as well sealed as the AMS2 Pro. Now to be fair, the original AMS was not designed to be airtight at all. So you will see that if you have a humidity value set, the Tetris will cycle on several times a day if the humidity in your room is high. My AMS2 Pro with desiccant pods installed seems to keep humidity levels constant if it's not opened. The Tetris can't rotate filament during the drying cycle like the Ivos Polyphemus or the AMS2 Pro unless you are drying while printing. That's it, folks. Let me share my final thoughts. There really isn't any competition for the Ibos Tetris with the exception of the AMS2 Pro. I was pretty impressed at the level of engineering and thought put into this device. If you already have a Bamboo Lab setup with one or more of the original AMS units, this could be a perfect solution for you. You can buy two Tetris units for the cost of one AMS2 Pro if you snag the pre-order price. So yeah, if you're looking for a dryer and you have an AMS, I'd highly recommend this product. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you'd consider adding this dryer to your current setup. Or if you thought I missed something in the review, I would love to hear that too. And don't forget to hit the like button, be sure to subscribe, and tap that bell for more hands-on 3D printing and other directed technology reviews and information. As always, I've enjoyed spending time with you today. Let's keep on learning, burning, printing, and growing together. Take care, everyone.